One of the best things about Figma is how collaborative it is. And there's more than one way to work with other people. So if you're still bouncing back and forth between Figma and other apps like Zoom or Slack to communicate with your team when you're designing, you don't have to. I'm going to show you four ways to chat and communicate directly in Figma and unlock its powerful hidden collaboration features. Whenever I'm co-designing with someone in Figma, sometimes we're just casually working on our own thing at the same time in the same file. And if I want to quickly send them a message, I used to have to jump into Slack chat, maybe send them a screenshot with a quick question. And that kind of takes up a lot of time and breaks up my workflow. Well, I don't have to do that with Figma. Instead, I can use cursor chat. Cursor chat lets you type live temporary messages to other people in your Figma files. To enter cursor quick chat, use the keyboard shortcut backslash and then start typing. So you'll see a little message bubble appear here and then your message will move with the cursor and then other people that are in the file can reply to. And this is a temporary message so it's just going to kind of pop up and then disappear automatically. So this is great for quick, short encounters, reactions, little messages um, as you're working. If a longer discussion needs to happen, and I know there'll probably be a bit of back and forth, normally that would get scheduled for a video meeting or a phone call, but there's so much friction to that, finding a time, creating an invite, sharing your screen, all very time consuming. Well, in Figma, you can have live voice conversations with your collaborators in any file on the fly. This is really great for co-designing, for walkthroughs, for workshopping, more detailed discussions about design decisions. This is also great for walking your devs through implementation and prototypes. So to use audio chat, just click on the headphone icon in the top right of any file, and you can click on the mixing board icon to select your preferred mic and speakers here. And you'll see these little audio bars light up green indicating that someone's speaking. It's just kind of like being on a Zoom call and screen sharing because you're both in the same file, you're both seeing the designs that you're working on and you're talking to each other in real time. So sometimes the person you're working with isn't there at the same time as you are and you're working asynchronously. Or maybe you wanna leave a more permanent message or a note or an annotation for whoever comes into the file or whoever you're sharing the file with. That's when I use comments. Comments are great because they are anchored wherever you place them in your design and you can also move them around. So to make a comment, you just click on the comment icon in the top left and then you place your cursor wherever you want that comment to go on whatever element you're commenting on and then click on it and then you can add your comment. People can reply to them. They can mention someone using the at symbol and their name. Um, you can react to them with emojis and you can also mark them as resolved. So if it's kind of a task that needs to be addressed, then the person that takes care of that or handles that can just click resolve and then it will remove the comment. And then another nice thing is that when you do leave that comment, Figma will notify anyone you mention via email. Now, if you ever get lost trying to find your collaborators around, instead of pretending that you know where they are like I do, you can just click on their avatar from the top right and then click on Spotlight. And again, to do that, you click on their icon and then click on Spotlight Me or Spotlight whoever it is, and that will allow you to follow them around the canvas. And if there are multiple people in your file, then you can switch over and follow another person by clicking on their icon. Now, if you find yourself always frantically hitting command or control Z, trying to undo something or get back to a version of a screen you were working on, well, then you might not know about Figma's version history and checkpoints. So Figma automatically versions your files for you and records checkpoints after you've been idle for 30 minutes. It logs this in your version history. Now this also works when someone else is working in the file too and it also logs their history. So to access the version history list and checkpoints, you can click on the title of any file and then click on show version history and a checkpoint list will pop out on the right side and then you'll be able to see how many auto saves there are and their timestamps. Now the trick to making this really, really useful is to click on any one of the versions and then click on the three dot context menu in the right hand side of that and then click on name this version. Now you can add in a title 
and then you can describe exactly what changed or what you were doing on this version of that file. And then at any point when you want to, you'll be able to see that here and then you can click on those dots again and you can restore this version, you can make a duplicate or, and this is really cool, you can copy a link specifically to that version of that file and send that to somebody else. So that's really useful if you wanna say, hey, remember when we did this version, when the icon was over here on the left, what did you think of this? Or maybe we should work on this one. I am always recommending to my design students that they keep a work journal because it is really helpful as self-reflection and as documenting your process when you're working. Not only does it help you in team and collaborative environments, but when you're creating your case studies later on down the road and you can't really remember in hindsight everything that you were doing and thinking when you were working on this project, well, when you actually have a written reference of that, it makes it so much easier to create the narrative around your case studies. So this is a really great habit to get into. And like I said, Figma auto saves this every 30 minutes that you've been idle, but I do it whenever I'm working on a file and you can do that by going over to Figma file and then hitting save to version history. And then it will bring up that same title and description box and you can um, manually save a version with a description that way. So, you know, especially at the end of the day too, before you close up your file, make sure you go through that version history, leave a couple of notes so that you have context for that and that it's useful when you go back to it later on. So I hope you found this helpful and definitely watch my other playlist on other Figma tips, tricks, plugins right here. <laughs>